All right, so today is Tuesday, August 29th. It's four o'clock, and today is the uh, City Council Committee on City Services meeting. Um, it, just a reminder that this meeting and all who are on it are being audio and video recorded. Um, so let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Laura, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Um, Councillor Foster. I'm here. Councillor Gore. Here. Councillor LaBarge. Here. And Councillor Perry. Here. Okay, that makes four of us here. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, and next up on our agenda is public comment. I do see <laughs> some members of the public here. Um, if you would like to make a comment, please go ahead and raise uh, your virtual hand. I'm also relatively adept. We're all on one screen at looking for actual hands if, if um, you're having trouble uh, finding the virtual hand. Um, I would ask you, um, just in the interest of time, committee meetings, we try to keep to an hour um, just to limit, limit your comments. Um, uh, to uh, allow space for everybody to participate. Um, so, Quaverly, I see your hand up. If you'd like to go ahead and make a comment, I'll unmute you. Uh oh. Oh, there you are. You you moved on my screen. Are you getting the little thing that that asks you? Okay. Yes. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Great. So thank you so much for having me. I'm Quaverly Rothenberg. I am the former president of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, and I'm running in an unopposed race for the Ward 3 City Council. So I do already hear a fair bit from constituents just in those two capacities. And so I'm here today to try to help and do a little bit of diplomacy on some concerns that I've heard from residents of the Salvo House and some other public housing units about the reappointment that's being considered, but also to share some um, possible solutions that might address concerns that counselors might have as well, and also those who are not opposed to the reappointment. So as best I can figure from the um, research that I've been able to do in this short period of time is that, we have a, a reappointment on the table for a public, public housing commissioner and that you have about 90 days to act on that and that that might bring you to about November 1st. You'd have to check that. I'm not positive about that figure. But what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of tension and conflict at the public housing meetings as of late. And I think that's something that I'm hearing from everyone no matter where they stand on the issue of the appointment. And what I would suggest is that in the context where it would be unprecedented to go against an appointment and to not refer it back to city council with a positive recommendation, we should be very cautious and careful about how we frame the deliberation on whether we go against that precedence. And I think there's room to do that in a way that is not scandalous and doesn't focus on anything like egregious conduct or picking apart the character of anyone. I don't think those are really the issues that are on the table here. I think what we're looking at is a situation where we as a city, including our mayor when she was a city councilor, made a recommendation to increase the number of residents on the board from one to six which would have made it a majority resident board. So that was an interesting initiative that I think signaled that we had a desire to center resident voices. And of course it would be important to do that because the residents have a tremendous amount at stake. I don't know if you've ever seen their lengthy leases, but there are many infractions and small things they can do that would get them to lose their housing and even their section eight vouchers. So it's a very delicate situation for them and of course, they probably wouldn't be living in public housing if they weren't facing some sort of adversity at some point in their lives, if not in that moment that they are there. So we really wanna be careful and sensitive and understanding of anyone who is marginalized or vulnerable in our community. And so public housing residents are certainly of utmost concern to all of us. When we introduced resident board members, 
we found that some of them were expressing that they felt that there were microaggressions, that there were racism, that they were accused of not bringing the right matters to the board in the right way at the right time. And I think that this has all created a lot of discomfort for everyone on every side of this issue. And I don't think that the matter before us today is to look into those to corroborate them or to decide if that's right or wrong or who is right or wrong, but just to acknowledge that the conflict and the discomfort is there. And to also acknowledge that the housing authority and HUD and the state and the feds are not providing us with a lot of resources for the public housing residents or for the, the non-resident commissioners. So for the public housing residents, it could be things like how are they understanding Robert's rules? And for the non-residents, it could be things like how are they understanding DEI? And all of that is outside of the city council's control. Of course, you could make recommendations to Kara that she requires DEI training, and you could also make recommendations that she require in-house counsel to help advise the residents and help them parse their grievances and figure out which ones are actionable and which ones are just living in a society. So what I would suggest is that if the city council only has the power to make appointments, and that is the one place where you touch public housing, that the appointment is where you should focus your intention. When you look at things like the 2020 resolutions on equity and 2020 resolutions on how we are centering the voices of marginalized people and caring for them, this appointment can easily fall into that category to say this, we have the political will to do something unprecedented, to take a different process with our appointments and to deliberate very carefully and thoughtfully about what kind of backgrounds and skill sets we want for the non-resident commissioners on this board. So I would propose that that's where we are and that if you do have this 90 days, if you do have until about November 1st, take some time and, and think about how you would wanna do that and take no action on, on uh, referring a, a positive referral on an appointment today. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me anytime. I have been talking a lot, as I say, with many different people on all sides of this. So thank you so much. Thank you, Quaverly. Are there any other members of the public um, that would like to make a public comment? Okay, so the way our agenda is structured is we first, um, well, we'll be looking, oh, I see one more person. Uh, so I will stop what I was saying and go back uh, to you, Gwen, uh, and then we'll, we will move on. Um, so Gwen, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. And again, you may have missed the beginning, but just to be sure, um, we have a chance for everybody who wants to participate. I'm just asking folks, um, we don't have the strict time limit, but, but to limit your comments. Um, yes, hello, how are you? Good to see everybody today, like sort of through this little phone that I have on right now. Um, I just want to echo what Quaverly spoke about. And also, um, you know, there's so much that has happened throughout the COVID. Um, so many um, situations that we've faced as residents um, during a period of time where there was no general maintenance. Um, and so given that and being uh, given the inequities that were laid to bear um, during those times, um, I would love if the city council could consider that. And, um, and I would also appreciate everything that Quaverly just said. Um, I think she said it pretty well. Thank you. Thank you, Quinn. All right. Uh, are there any other members of the public that would like to make a comment? All right. I will revisit my sentence. The way the agenda is structured is um, we have our minutes of previous meetings to approve and then items uh, referred to committee. And the first one we're going to take up just in the interest of, of city staff time is the appointment of um, Assistant Fire Rescue Chief Andrew Pilas. Um, after the minutes, and then we will take up um, the appointments in the order that they appear on the agenda. So I, I understand there's some interest and I thank folks uh, for, for coming to the meeting. Um, so Mayor, bear with us for one second. I just wanna, um, if I don't go in order, I get lost. Uh, we have the minutes of previous meetings. Um, that's the minutes of July 11th, 2023 um, to look at. Uh, do we have a, a motion on those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. 
Okay, second it. Oh. All right, thank you. So Councilor, um, Councilor Perry makes a motion and Councilor Labarge seconds. Um, any discussion on approval of the minutes? Okay, Laura, would you do a roll call, please? Sure. I have Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Gore. It's muted. Oh, she can't unmute. Okay. Um, I asked her to, but thanks. Yes. Oh, okay. Councilor Labarge. Yes. And Councilor Perry. Yes. Okay, thank you. That motion passes four to zero, which brings us up to item five, or number five items referred to committee. And the first one is 23.368, the appointment of Assistant Fire Rescue Chief Andrew Pilas as Chief of Northampton Fire Rescue. And um, Mayor, I see you here. I assume you have an introduction for us. I am here. Good afternoon, everyone. I am absolutely delighted to be here to support the appointment of Andrew Pilas to the position of Chief of Northampton Fire Rescue Department. Um, Andy began his career as a firefighter in Northampton in 1998, moving through all the ranks as a training officer, fire prevention officer, hazmat technician, shift captain, uh, deputy chief, assistant chief, and now it, it, he is my absolutely very enthusiastic choice for chief. Um, as assistant chief, Andy received thorough leadership training as part of sound succession planning in the fire rescue department. He will bring continuity and continue the exceptional service that is the hallmark of Northampton Fire Rescue. Um, he's also a homegrown talent as a native of Northampton and a graduate of Northampton High School, and he lives in the city with his family. So um, I am very happy to, to be here to support his appointment, and I thank you so much for considering this incredibly important um, position for the city. Thank you, Mayor. And um, Assistant Chief Pilas, or Chief Pilas, I see you here. Thank you. <laughs> Just for a process note. Let's go ahead and put this item on the floor, uh, which would, would take a motion from the committee, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Yes. I'd like to motion to put the appointment on the floor. Or a motion for a specific recommendation. Oh, okay. A motion for a recommendation for, for chief. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And um, our choices are a positive, neutral. Oh, for a positive or... recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> okay, thank you. So motion made by Councillor Gore and seconded by Councillor Labarge. That opens us up to discussion. Um, and um, Chief Pilas, would you like to make any comments before we open it up to council questions? I can ask you to unmute here. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Well, the mayor pretty much took my speech. Um, I'm just going to talk talk about everything I did. Um, thank you, Mayor. That was great. Um, counselors, uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, this is exciting for me. Um, like the mayor said, I grew up in Northampton. I'm vested in Northampton. Um, I take pride in the fact that I grew up here. Um, my family still lives around here. Um, I couldn't be prouder. I wouldn't want to work for another department. Um, you know, throughout my years with the department, uh, we've seen some um, great progression, and it's my goal to uh, keep our department progressing in the right direction. Thank you, and uh, thank you for being here at the meeting. Um, Council Labarge, I see your hand up. Can we ask questions now? You may ask questions. Okay. Um, Chief. Our former chief every month would send city councilors updates, which I think is excellent, excellent to get that type of information. Are you still planning on doing that? Absolutely. I will absolutely uh, send those to you every month. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Very much. Also, too, I think the mayor said it all. I mean, you started working for the fire department way back in what, 1998? And you worked your way up through the ranks of where you are right now. And the mayor made a good recommendation here. You know, you put your time in, in the city, you live in the city, you have family members of the city. I wanna thank you very, very much for hopefully becoming our new fire chief. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay, other counselors, questions for Chief Pilas? Okay, Chief Pilas, I, I have um, one for you. Okay. One, I guess I'm curious, um, you've been the assistant chief for not all that long because we, we made this appointment, um, I remember it very, very vividly um, in March of 2020 um, right. for cool. your uh, predecessor. And I'm curious of, of the direction the department's taken over the last couple of years. Um, what you intend as far as continuity, what you would like to see say the same, and then if there's any tweaks to to that, that, that under your leadership, um, things that you're looking at for different directions or, or different avenues to explore. Sure. Well, you know, some of the challenges we have now is, um, is, is believe it or not, hiring. Um, never in the history of my career has it been this difficult to hire uh, firefighters. Um, we're six short right now. Um, you know, our overtime is 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 pretty high because we're in the summer months and we're short staffed. Um, you know, we're doing everything. We're, we're getting out. We're getting to the colleges. We're getting. You know, we started the thing at Smith Vocational, trying to get people interested in this in this profession. Um, unfortunately. You know, COVID hit and people started working from home. And my opinion is once they realize they can make the same amount of money working from home, we don't get a lot of people that are interested in going into work. So it's be it's become a challenge. Um, we're hopeful. We've kind of not dropped our, our criteria for getting into the department, but we've we're allowing individuals to start at a EMT basic and we will support them to work towards getting their medic. We're hoping that that will get a different um, set of uh, individuals in, into our department, um, which which will hopefully get us to full staffing shortly here. Um, as far as the challenges, um, also I would say it's kind of related to COVID is, is the mental health crisis. Um, I see um, this this new department, the Community Cares Department, is going to be a gigantic help, um, and I am so looking forward to working with them and getting getting that going uh, to kind of get the individuals the help they need. So they're not just we're not just bringing them to the hospital and they're getting released um, a few hours later. And we're constantly dealing with it. So I think that's going to be that's going to be a, a huge plus for our department and our community. Um, as far as you know, things that are staying the same, um, you know, we have our capital built out. You know, that's really not going to change much. Um, uh, we got our new ladder showing up. That should be here in October, which which will be uh, good because we've been without a ladder now for half a year. Um, and the individuals that are there, you know, we have um, our training program. In my opinion, is the is is the best um, in the area. Um, we have a great training officer. Um, our people are very uh, vested into their profession, uh, EMS and fireside. Um, we have some of the best medics, and I'm I'm so fortunate that I live in this in this city that if if something happens to me, that um, our personnel are going to be taking care of me. I'm, I'm truly so proud of them and the work that they do and, and the, the time they put into it um, to educate themselves. Thank you. Councilor Bartsch. Yes, thank you, Councilor. Um, Chief, I yes. want Karen ask the questions about how you are going on with staffing and so forth. What ships is this occurring? Is it all three ships or is it split? So so we have four shifts. Um and we are and and we try to balance the shifts out, but we run at a minimum staffing level of 13 per shift. So we have we staff, we have three shifts with 15 and one with 16 if we're at full staffing. Uh, but if we're six down, you just take numbers away from those shifts. And with sick time and vacation, then as you can see, if we drop below 13, we need to hire. Mm -hmm. So we still, every shift runs at the minimum of 13. It's just our overtime 
we have to hire more people or hold people to work until we can, you know, fill a shift. So how much overtime do you think right now you have accumulated? Uh, I believe it's 20% of our budget, if I, if I was to guess so far. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to ask a follow-up to that question, then I'll come back to you, Councilor, um, Councilor Gore. We um, we have heard some from the police department, um, the impacts on morale of the holdovers. And I understand you're 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 working hard on hiring, but I'm I'm curious uh, if you have any comments regarding that. It, it it's it, it's an issue. Um, yeah. it, it definitely it, it's it it they get they get overworked and they get tired and it's it's an issue. And that's why we're trying to hire as soon as possible so we can kind of you know, loosen the load as far as people having to stay and getting forced to stay. Um, I will say our department has been doing a better job of, of other members picking up the slack and taking some of the overtime. Like in the past, sometimes it'd be the same people taking the overtime and then others wouldn't take it. But they've done a, a better job, I've noticed, as far as kind of spreading out the overtime so everybody's not stuck getting held. Um, so that's a bonus. But it's certainly, it's certainly an issue. And, and I, like, like I said earlier, I hope to be able to um, get us the full staffing as, as quick as possible. That's the goal, anyways. Of course, thank you, Councilor Gore. My question, actually, <laughs> about oh. our outside morale. Yeah. Great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you have a did you have another question or I, I took it right out no. from under you? Okay. Um and are there any other questions here from the council? Okay. I'll just um make a comment then. Um, you know, I've I've had a couple of occasions to interact with um EMS and fire services and, and each time um, I've been grateful to live in Northampton for the quality of, of the department we have here. And I appreciate your long history with the department. Um, and I, I think that matters um, when choosing leadership. So congratulations on your appointment. I intend to vote in favor. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if there's no further comments, then Laura, we can go ahead and do a roll call. Sounds like Gore. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Um, Councilor Perry. Yes. And Councilor Foster. Yes. Okay, so that passes four to nothing. And congratulations, Chief Felis. This will appear on the next council agenda. Um, it always seems so anticlimactic, but um, we are going to move on now um, to the next items um, referred to the committee. Um, and oh, Mayor, I see your hand up. I, I think actually Chief Phyllis is trying to say something, but he, um, oh. Oh. there we go. Thank you. Oh, I just want thank you. That's all I was trying to say. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, we're at um, item B, 23.358, um, appointment to the Urban Forestry Commission. This was referred by the City Council on July 13th. And just a process note, um, especially because I know we have some, some folks here who um, are members of the public, don't typically attend the city services meeting. Um, we've been working as a committee to implement recommendations from the City Council Select Committee to study barriers to service. And one of those um, recommendations was, um, you know, looking through a standardized list of questions um, that we as counselors um, will ask uh, potential appointees. And as a process note, we typically only talk with new appointees. We don't typically talk with um, people who are up for reappointment. Um, and so I had a chance to use the list of questions that we came up with at our last meeting. Um, I, I spoke with Jordan Freed for the Urban Forestry Commission, and so I'll base my report on those on those questions. Um, and so Jordan Freed is up for um, a, a new appointment to the Urban Forestry Commission. Um, he moved to Northampton just under a year ago. Um, He's been kind of in between New York City and Vermont and has always loved Northampton for all of its 
offering socially and culturally um, and was excited to move to Northampton. Um, as he's a professional arborist um, and has been involved both as a professional and as a volunteer with urban forestry boards for years, he's been involved in, in Hartford um, as well as, as several others. And the way he described Northampton's um, board is that it's a breath of fresh air. He's seen um, a lot of evolution in urban forestry over the years um, and uh, appreciates that Northampton um, tends to remain current with how the city manages its tree canopy. Um, he's most interested in engaging with the public um, and, you know, kind of educating the community about tree health. Um, and that includes times when trees do come down. And, you know, he he very astutely, um, you know, was, was able to discuss how we all feel att attachment to particular trees, whether it's in our yard or our neighborhood or trees we like to visit in the city. And he feels very committed to, you know, sort of working with members of the public to understand um, you know, tree health and uh, what that means for decisions that the city makes about managing um, the, the urban uh, forest. And one of the things he said is that people don't often associate, um, you know, sort of arborists and, and assessment of tree health with um, academia and don't always realize the level of knowledge and background um, and, and academic background that goes into the decisions that are made. Um, and so, you know, he, he views that as an opportunity for public engagement. Um, and that's a role actually that he would hope to play on the board is to be a liaison with the public was his words exactly. Um, and, and to make sure he meets people where they're at um, in conversations. And, um, you know, his uh, credentials on paper as a certified arborist he has a degree in horticulture, project manager. Um, he's worked in the field for um, for decades, has a ton, ton of experience to offer. Um, and so with that, I would move a positive recommendation of Jordan Freed to the Urban Forestry Committee. Second it. Okay, so I made the motion, seconded by Council Labarge. Any discussion on that motion? Okay, with no further discussion, Laura, would you take a roll call, please? Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Gore. Yes. Okay, so that motion uh, passes four to zero and brings us up to 23.367, um, the new appointment of Danielle Turner to the Human Rights Commission. And Councillor Perry, I believe you had a chance to speak with him. Yes, uh, I did. I had a pleasure. We had a, a nice long conversation. Um, Donnell Turner, just recently moved to the area, I believe in July, um, and uh, he said he immediately started looking for ways to be involved in this community. Um, and he was really excited to see the position for Human Rights Commission. Um, he actually came to this area to fill in a brand new position at Amherst College, which happens to be my alma mater. So we had a lovely conversation about uh, how Amherst was when I was there and just, you know, how the vision of what he sees the space to be. Um, he, he's got 20 years in higher education. He's currently the director of inclusive career development um, and, and is looking to bring some of that, uh, his personal skills, his ability to, um, you know, lead projects and lead groups and teams to the Human Rights Commission. Um, one of the things that he said that he was most excited about working on or really wanted to focus on was um, finding ways to to look at uh, police training uh, and de-escalation and really have a human rights-based approach to that. Um, we, we talked a lot about the fact that he has little kids who are in the area. He's, I believe, three daughters. Um, so a lot of the discussion was just ways that he can make this community more accepting for his children and for other people of color. Um, we we really heartened. You know, he, he talked a lot about uh, being hesitant to come here. He had been working at LaSalle um, for about 11 years, and he's not a person who is used to change. Uh, he's a, a pillar in the community there, working at the local church. But since he's moved here, he's found a couple spaces um, that have been very welcoming and inviting. So. Uh, with that being said, I would highly recommend a positive recommendation for Donnell Turner. So I'll make a motion for that. I'll say. 
Thank you. Motion for a positive recommendation made by Councillor Perry and seconded by Councillor Gore. Any discussion on this motion? Okay, Laura, would you take a roll call, please? Councillor Perry. Oh, oh yes. frozen. Oh, I just heard a yes, though. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay. That motion passes four to zero. And that brings us up um, to the second part of item C, which is um, the reappointment of Marilyn Richards to the Northampton uh -huh. Housing Authority. Um, to put this on the floor, we would need a, a motion on that. Or actually, you know what, councilors, we can, I've, we've changed our council rules just a little bit. We can discuss things and then follow up with a motion after. Okay. Okay. Um, so the appointment of Marilyn Richards to the Northampton Housing Authority, um, we can discuss that. We did hear some um, public comment regarding that appointment at the beginning of the meeting and just wanna have a space for councilors um, to ask questions or, or um, share on that appointment. Council Labarch. Yeah. Uh, um concerned about what I heard about this appointment and it was sent from our mayor's office and mayor you heard the comments that were brought forth to our committee here could you talk about what you've heard today at our meeting so that makes us feel like the doors are open to move on in voting on a reappointment Sure. Uh, I'm and actually, Mayor, before you do, which you're 100% recognized and able to respond, and Council Labarge, this is something I meant to say before you spoke um, and forgot to. So this isn't directed to you. This this is a general. Um, one of the things that I think is one of the trickiest things about the City Services Committee is that we are discussing um, the appointments of people who are volunteering to serve their time for the city. Exactly. And that, that can... Uh, first, there's the gratitude of people willing to step up and volunteer, and also uh, I'm very sensitive to the fact that these conversations are happening in the public sphere. So I just wanted to preface our conversation with that, and, and again, that was in no way directed to you. I appreciate you you talking to the mayor. I just wanted to make sure I framed our discussion in that exactly, way. Exactly, because I was not too happy hearing what I heard. Thank you. So now, Mayor, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, so yes, I mean, I, I listened to those comments. Um, we receive a lot of comments about Northampton Housing Authority in the mayor's office. It's one of uh, the more challenging um, situations that we deal with. And one of the reasons it's challenging is that as you know, we, and as was talked about by those in public comment, we have little um, ability to make change at the housing authority. And, and it's true. One of the really the only mechanism that we have are appointments. So I certainly understand the concern. Um, the So I have been looking for people to serve on this board for uh, since I've been mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I've been actively trying to fill a position um, for about a year. I've talked to many, many people. I think I have someone um, who, who may fill uh, one of these resident positions. Um, but it has been incredibly challenging to find people to step up to serve. Um, so um, this reappointment is someone who has served since 2018. And um, I, you know, I understand there's concern about um, leadership at the Housing Authority and um, and people, um, people's, you know, sort of uh, being able to really be be heard. And I. I hear that and I feel that and I experience that as well. Um, but as I said, I've had a very hard time finding uh, people willing to step up to serve. So um, I am, you know, I'm very happy to have the council, um, you know, look, take a closer look at the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, you know, it's something that I, we spend a lot of time in this office um, talking about and trying to figure out how we can help folks um, with their, uh, you know, their real needs and concerns and, um, and help them be heard by the leadership there. 
-hmm. Thank you very, very much, Mayor. Okay. Hey, other councilors, questions or comments? Councilor Gore. Um, I also have heard from uh, constituents about uh, the housing authority and this reappointment in particular. And I'm just wondering what, if, if anything that we can do about the leadership at the housing authority and how it's, how it's um, taking place right now and what, what we can do as city services. Can we maybe bring in the chair to a meeting or something like that? I, I don't know what we could do. That, that's a great question, Councilor Gore. I can answer from the city council perspective and then we have the benefit of the mayor being here so I can um, let her answer from the mayor's perspective as well. Um, a couple of years ago, we we did on city services bring in um, uh, uh, actually Marilyn Richards to discuss the Northampton Housing Authority and had a conversation with her. We're in this somewhat uh, strange position as a city councilor or city services because the Northampton Housing Authority, the city appoints the majority of the board, but the housing authority is actually a state agency. And so it's not fully under the purview of city services, although the appointments and the confirmation appointments um, are certainly under our purview. And Mayor, I don't know if you would like to speak to that as well. Um, no, I mean, I think you, you said it well, but you certainly could extend an invitation and ask if, um, you know, you could say as, as elected representatives of the city, we have heard concern, you know, I've certainly had conversations that I've said, you know, we've gotten, uh, there are things that I've heard and I would like you to come and talk to me about them. So I think as the legislative branch, I think it's, you know, uh, um, certainly within your right to contact the executive director and say that you would like her to come and, and talk to you about what you've heard. Um, I don't think you can compel her to come because as Councillor Foster said, um, we don't oversee her, uh, but I think you certainly could say that you would like her to appear before you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Gore. Uh, Councilor Barch. Yes, um, for the mayor, please. Mayor, I know we've had those two appointments for a long time, and there was talk about why do we have two appointments when it is a different entity of itself? We appoint, that's as far as we go, the housing authority through the federal government, correct, is in control of how they make that board. Is that correct? So we actually, so um, you remember we had a home rule petition to change um, yeah. the number of appointments that we have. So by the state statute, there are five members um, and uh, four of which who are appointed by the mayor of the city in which that, um, you know, the, the housing authority is, and then one that's appointed by uh, the governor. And, um, but then we went to the legislature and asked to have that increased to um, two additional uh, tenant members. So this is actually a seven member board as opposed to a five member board for, um, you know, as according to the state statute. I'm going to go ahead and, and jump in um, because we, ha we have a quiet moment as, as chair. It's always slightly awkward going last. Um, you know, I, I have been thinking about this a lot today. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I had some conversations and first really uh, heard concerns about 10 o'clock this morning. And I just want to be fully transparent parent that I, I really appreciate that. And that's also not enough time for me to do the level of research um, on an appointment or on, on a decision that, that I would like to do and that I, I think these kinds of questions deserve. Um, you know, that being said, I hear that there are questions regarding the housing authority. Um, I believe that in the next month or two, we'll likely see more appointments for the housing authority. And as one possible course of action is we could continue this discussion and consider put the Northampton Housing Authority on our agenda for a future meeting, invite the executive director to come in and talk 
and also give us as counselors time to do our research prior to making a decision. As I mentioned in the beginning, I, I'm, um, I just want to be really mindful that, you know, that, that the discussion in the public sphere stays in the respectful way that it is, but also that we as counselors are able to make the best decision we can for the city. Uh, so one, one suggestion I have is that, that we continue this discussion to a future meeting. Um, and I'll, I'll just put that that idea out there uh, for for discussion um, and other counselors. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Council Lovage. Yes, um, I would like to make a motion with the suggestion of giving us time to do some research on this. And you talked about inviting the director from the housing authority. What about like the chair? of the housing authority also. I mean, why not? I mean, they have to follow the rules just like we have to. The charter is a biggie. Isn't that correct, Mayor? They have to abide by rules like we have to abide by rules? Um. Th yes, I, I think that they have a, um, have a set of rules, but I'm sorry, I missed what your question was, Councilor LaBarge, about... But Okay, asking the the housing authority director to come to our next meeting and also possibly maybe the chair or whatever. I don't know. The we only never, thing that's we never we, had to go through this. No, and, and we could counsel a barge. The only thing that's tricky is is if correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's the chair's appointment that, that we're considering right now. Yeah. Or, or, no, 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 I am wrong. Right. Oh good. Correct me. That's what I meant. Okay. That's um, the chair. Yeah, so so we we absolutely could do that. Whatever. <laughs> Laura, I see your hand up. I would just like as a point of information to refer yes. to um, the charter's timeline for the consideration of appointments, just that section 210 of the city the charter says that okay, the City Council shall refer each name submitted to a standing committee, which shall make a recommendation to the full City Council, not less than seven nor more than 45 days after the referral. And then the final sentence of that paragraph says, appointments made by the mayor shall become effective on the 45th day after the date on which notice of the pro proposed appointment was filed with the City Clerk unless approved or rejected by the city council within the 45 days. And just I just checked in my inbox the date that I received the um, memo, appointment memo from this uh, mayor's office was August 14th. So I believe um, the city services, the council has 45 days. I mean, I don't know if that's ever <laughs> actually been enforced, but that's what the charter says, just. Um, and where does 45 days put us at, Laura? Um, good question. I, well, I can do my math here too. Yeah, August 14th. So um, 30. It's roughly the end of September, September 30th. Okay. Um, so that would leave us with potentially two choices. One would be to request from the city council president um, an extension of that time, which I've, which I've seen um, granted in the past for committees to um, to follow through assignments. And then the other is if we needed to, we could always schedule a special meeting um, for near the end of September. Although I'd like to avoid that if we can, because I know that that's often very difficult for scheduling. I just have to say this, this is a rough one because I've never seen this occur. Councillor Perry. There it is. Um, sorry, I had to leave for a second, but I um, just want to say that I also agree that this this appointment needs a step back and a look at the Northampton Housing Authority in whole. I've been attending the last few meetings, and I think that um, in order for me to appropriately vote, I would like to talk to the chair and maybe the executive director, because um, I, I have some questions just in general about uh, the way things are being run and just um, just a lot of questions. So yeah. my thought would be that we should uh, take a step back and try and invite them here and see what we can do to do our due diligence. Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing um, 
was sounding like a lot of agreement among the members um, of this committee. Um, and so um, I'd be glad to take on the legwork of asking A for an extension and inviting the executive director and the chair in. And then also, um, you know, just the recognition that, that there's multiple appointments to the housing authority um, coming up on our agendas and that, um, you know, this is something that we would be wise to look into further as a committee prior to acting on, on future appointments. Sounds great. Okay. Um, Councilor Labarge, in case I've gotten lost in a swirl, <laughs> you did you make a motion to continue this discussion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion okay. to continue this discussion. I'll second that. Okay, so motion to continue the discussion made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Gore. Is there discussion on continuing the discussion? Okay, great. So um, I will, will, Laura and I will get together. We'll follow up um, with committee members. And like all of our meetings, this will be a public meeting um, with an agenda posted um, ahead of time. Um, so we'll, we'll do that legwork. Um, Laura, would you take a roll call, please, on continuing the discussion? Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Perry. Oh, we still muted. Oops, I'm so sorry. Let's see. Um, this could be our new sign for yes, though, Councillor Perry. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. So that motion um, passes four to zero as well. Um, which brings us up to new business, which I sort of feel like was wrapped into our last discussion. Um, but I do want to give an opportunity if counselors have new business for us to address. Okay. And that brings us up to items. I will make them. Oh. I jumped the gun, sorry. <laughs> no, go go ahead. It's just that your audio cut out, so I just need you to repeat it. Oh, I will make a motion to adjourn. I second it. <laughs> okay, uh, motion made by Councillor Perry, seconded by Councillor Labarge. Laura, would you take a roll call, please? Sure. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. 